Okay, we're going to take a look at the next phase of things. So we've we've learned about bootstrapping and what it is. We've talked about the fact that bootstrapping is resampling from the original sample um, with replacement. So we're pulling out individuals from the original sample to create a bootstrap sample. Uh, it's done through resampling and uh, and we put the individuals back in so that we um, and, and then by putting the, the, the people back in, we're, we're basically um, creating then another random sample, um, similar but not exactly the same as the original sample that we did. So, so now that we know what bootstrapping is and why we do it, and, and you need to be able to explain bootstrapping, what, what the actual mechanics of it are, and why we do it. And we do it because it's much easier to resample from the original sample than to keep pulling out um, a brand new sample each time from the population. If you think about trying to do that from an animal population of kiwis or whatever that are wild, you can see how difficult and how, how cumbersome and time consuming that could be. But once we've got a good sample, then if we can resample from that, that makes our life as statisticians much easier. So, what do we do? Well, we generally take um, about a thousand resamples. And what we do is we create what's called the 95% confidence interval. So we've dealt with this, this confidence interval before, but now we're going to actually look at it um, and sort of deep dive into what a 95% confidence interval is and how we create it. Um, so what does it look like when we do this thousands of resamples or bootstraps from an original sample? And what does it tell us? That's what we need to know. So remember, we don't want to rely on a single sample because the point estimate we use around the differences in the medians would be wrong due to sample variability. We know every time we take a sample, it's different. It's different in its medians and in its quartile ranges, its means are different and so on. So chances are if we look at another sample, we're going to have a very different result. So what we need to do is take a lot of samples from the population and look to see what, what the results we get and sort of look at that range of results we get. But that's cumbersome and very time consuming. So instead of doing that, we bootstrap. We um, resample from the original sample with replacement many, many, many times. And in fact, what they deem appropriate for um, statistical validity is to do it about a thousand times. So NZ Grapher will do this, right? NZ Grapher will do, has a bootstrapping tool. And so what happens is, we pull out of the population of kiwis, this is the kiwi population, we pull out the um, sample and we look at basically the differences between the medians of the males and the medians of the females. So here's our sample pulled out of the population. We get a median of about this much, looks to be you know around, I don't know, 2.2 or something. And then we look at the median of the females which looks to be around uh, 2.8 or whatever. And we look at the difference. We subtract those medians to get the difference, right? And so that's what we did when we did um, our, our first part of our um, discussion. We basically looked at the difference in the medians, right? And then we answered our question, is there a difference in the medians? So we do that. But then we do, what we do is we bootstrap. So we're going to take a thousand resample. So I'll just show you what this looks like. If we resample from that original, we're going to pull out individuals out of the female and male group and redistribute them down here. So um, remember now when we're pulling these individuals out, we're pulling them out. So on random, we just give random number assignments to the females and males in the sample and we, we the m number comes up, we pull them out and we put them down here. But then we put them back in, right? Because we have to replace them. And so we do that, pull out an individual, replace them. Pull out an individual, replace them. Pull out an individual, replace them, and so on. And still we have exactly the same size sample as the original. So if we had a sample of 200 individuals, we would uh, do a bootstrap sample of those 200 individuals. So we get a sample that's the same size but very different because remember when we we do with replacement when we resample with replacement we're basically I'm putting individuals back in so sometimes individuals get picked two or three times some of them don't get picked at all just by random circumstance so here's the new difference between the medians 
seem to be quite close to the original, but obviously there's some, you know, there's going to be a difference. So here's our first bootstrap sample. And then what we do with that difference between the medians in our bootstrap sample is we drop it down here into this bootstrap distribution space. And whatever that distance is, which seems to be about 0.5 um, kgs or whatever the units are here, we, we, we measure that, we subtract it, right? The difference in the medians between the, fa we go female minus male because the female's bigger. And, um, and we subtract the male from the female and we get a, a, a value that we just show down here in this, this um, number line down here. And so, but we do that, I'll do another one, I'll just do another one. So we'll do another bootstrap, or this will be our second one. And we'll figure out what the, the medians for the male and the female Kiwis are from our second bootstrap. And then we'll drop down the differences between those medians into our bootstrap distribution number line down here. So taking them out, putting them back in, taking them out, putting them back in until we have the same size as our original. Then we find the medians from the box plots. We find the difference and we drop it down here. Now again, this one's a quite a bit different. Um, there's you know about point, you know, point six five or something, but it's different from the first sample that we did. And so we're going to keep doing this, and we're going to keep getting differences. Now again, well, which one of these would be correct? Do we think? You know, which one of these is right? This difference or this difference. So it's not clear. So we don't use just one, you know, this different this difference between the medians or this difference between the medians. We do a range of values that we get. So we create what we call a confidence interval from the bootstrap distribution. So we'll do a third one just real quick and then, and then we'll do a whole whack of them. So we'll do a third one and we'll see what that looks like. And we'll drop that down into the bootstrap distribution area and show what the difference in the medians is. And there it is. Very, very almost identical to that second one. So this is the third one. Now we do this a thousand times and drop those differences in the medians down. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So you'll see that that red arrow is showing the differences between the samples, the bootstrap samples that we're doing, and between the, the differences in the medians. So it's changing, you know, it's shorter, wider, it shifts and so on, and gives us a distribution of differences of medians. And we've got, it's going to take a bit of time to do a thousand of these, but you can see that this red arrow is dropping down and, and it's changing in its difference from zero, you know, like, all these samples are giving us quite different distributions or quite different di differences in the medians. So we're building a dot plot here through a thousand resamples with replacement and we get this bootstrap distribution. When it's done we basically will have what we call a confidence interval, a range of values where we could be very confident, 95% confident, that the population um, differences in the medians would fall. We're almost there. So when it's done, it's going to show us a couple of one of the things that's going to draw down on this graph, and this is something that you're going to have to include in your internal, okay? So we don't worry about all these decimal points, but here's our original sample. Here's the original difference. So the original difference between the medians of the male and female weights was 0.57 roughly kgs, right, between them. So the female's bigger, males lighter, and there's a difference of 0.57 in our sample. So we would say that the female is about 0.57 kgs heavier than the male in our sample, right? That's the difference. But after doing a thousand resamples, 
we get this distribution and range of values. So why is this confidence interval only sort of here? It doesn't go from the very tips. Well, that's that 5%. So we drop off the extreme sort of 2.5% on one side and 2.5% on the other side. We drop off that 5% and we basically take in the majority of the data, 95% of the data here. And it gives us a range of 0.455 and 0.7. That means that our 1,000 resamples, the differences in the medians between the male and female Kiwis, ranged from 0.455 to 0.7 kgs. Now, remember, the female was always bigger than the males because all those arrows were always pointing to the right. When we do these differences, the fact that we have two positive numbers is basically telling us that females were always bigger and they ranged bigger in kgs by about 0.455 kgs to about 0.7 kgs bigger than the males the differences in their medians was always they were always bigger they were either bigger by 0.455 to 0.7 so that's what we use when we uh, interpret um, the confidence interval. This is this is what we're looking for. This is the range of values that we use. We don't use this 0.5715, that point estimate between our, our original sample. We use a range of values which we can be quite confident that back in the population we would expect females to to be somewhere between 0.455 kgs to 0.7 kgs heavier than the males.